let me tell you the story of the space viking cosplayer known as Tom. Okay, I'm going to stop speaking in the third person. I'm Tom, by the way. I have been cosplaying with my friends ever since the Avengers first premiered way back in 2012, and it's become a tradition of ours ever since. Recently, I attended an IMAX showing of Thor, Love, and Thunder with my bros. As, uh, well, I went as Thor, of course. But what did I think of the movie? Well, sit back, grab your finest mead, and I'll give you my review. But before warned, there will be spoilers. Going in, I had my as guard up if you will, mainly due to Marvel fatigue. After all this time, I'm beginning to feel it. But by the time the credits rolled, I was smiling ear to me on ear. The film was worthy. In short, the story is about our characters, hero and villain alike, coming to terms with love and grief. There's a saying that true power reveals character. But what does true love reveal about ourselves? I think love reveals purpose. And what happens when that purpose becomes maligned, infected, or destroyed? What if that love is rekindled, challenged, or remade? Love and Thunder explore these complex narratives, ideas, and themes. Did it always deliver? No, but then again, neither do we. And that's kind of the film's point. After all, finding purpose in life is a journey into mystery. He. <laughs> okay, so what did I think of the characters? Christian Bale's performance as Gore the God Butcher is rock solid. He's easily one of the most compelling MCU villains yet. It is a testament to Bale's acting ability that he can be both sinister and sympathetic. Even though nobody on screen says the iconic line from the comics, Gore is right, we sure as hell were thinking it. Making your scary villain sympathetic is one thing, but having them turn a new leaf in the end is a huge gamble. And if you ask me, it was executed well. Superhero films are famously known for settling their differences through superpowered beatdown. So Thor and Gore resolving their differences by appealing to the better angels of their nature was, well, unexpected. And I liked it. I love it when superhero movies subvert expectations like this. Natalie Portman returns as Jane Foster. At long last, she's given her due. Jane's story is compelling, her chemistry with Thor is authentic, and her performance as the mighty Thor is divine. Will we ever see her again? If you ask me, I think the door to Valhalla has been left open for just that possibility. Tessa Thompson's King Valkyrie is a gift that keeps on giving. Unfortunately, I felt like her character wasn't given nearly enough screen time. Hopefully. We'll see more of Valkyrie in the near future. Maybe she and the Greek goddess Hera will get to know each other in the meantime. Oh man, it was nice seeing the Guardians of the Galaxy again. But be forewarned, they're not in the entire film. In fact, they're, they pretty much exit stage right in the first like 15 minutes. As Guardians of the Galaxy was heavily teased at the end of Avengers Endgame, so this feels like a huge missed opportunity. As one of my friends pointed out, it looked like the Guardians were set up to return in the third act, but that never happens. Either way, I'm excited for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Okay, so Thor Love and Thunder adapted many story elements from Jason Aaron's incredible Thor God of Thunder and the Mighty Thor comic book series. If there's one pet peeve I have with the comics, it's how neither Gore nor Mighty Thor crossed paths. It's a shame because Gore and Jane Foster's ideologies and character arcs juxtapose so neatly 
they have the potential to be arch enemies. This could still uh, end up happening someday in the comics, but I was intrigued nonetheless by the prospect of these characters finally meeting in the film, and it did not disappoint. Gore, Mighty Thor do indeed cross paths in this flick, and much to my delight, they do acknowledge their similarities. There's no generic, I'm nothing like you exchanges. It's a subtle acknowledgement that the line between good and evil is not always clear. In recent years, Thor has become such a lively, larger than life character, and this is largely due to Chris's unique acting range. There doesn't seem to be any sign of this real life god losing steam. I say thee nay, he still has thunder in his veins. I can't wait to see Thor return in future Marvel installments. Because let's face it, Thor is awesome. He's amazing. He's one of my, if not my, he's, he's like one of my favorite superheroes of all time. And what I know, I'm going to explain just what makes him special. Like other gods, Thor wants more. You'd be forgiven for thinking that more would come in the form of an, of an infinity stone or the forging of a new super weapon. But that's what makes Thor special. Instead of stealing power from higher beings or plundering the finite resources of mortals, he finds the answers he seeks in the hearts and minds of his loved ones. Thor is a god worth believing in because he's a god that believes in you. Now, uh, yeah, totally uh, convert to um, Norse, Norseism. Come on, guys, go for it. Join the uh, first church of, of Thor. We are, we have, um, hammer-shaped cookies. We, we gather every Thursday. With all that said, there are gaps in the story that makes me think crucial scenes were left on the cutting room floor. The movie seriously would have benefited from being 15 minutes longer. Apparently, the original film was four hours long. While I have nothing against the film's pacing, it's pretty good, all things considered these films really need to learn when to slow down. When it comes to tonal shifts, Love and Thunder face plants. The film pretty much is an action comedy and it mostly succeeds at being that. However, with the involvement of Gore, the God Butcher, and we really only saw him do that once. Geesh, should have shown him, you know, doing that, that whole God butchering thing a little bit more, right? God. <laughs> we go from a truly haunting villain doing unspeakably terrible things to a uh, space goat screaming. Don't get me wrong, the film ultimately succeeds in balancing its comedic moments with its sad ones. But when you take that and insert Gore's visceral horror, it looks like you're trying to mesh together three different genre films and, well, your mileage may vary. Also, uh, <clears throat> Marvel? Marvel, I know you're watching this video, Kevin. Please give your audience a chance to breathe. Moreover, we don't need a joke every 10 seconds. If something bad happens, let us grieve. Give us time to breathe and let our minds wander. Let our smiles overstay their welcome. I'm beginning to think big studios think we all have PTSD and our uh, five second attention spans can't handle serious subjects. Okay, they might be right about a few things. In closing, I give Thor Love and Thunder seven Stormbreakers out of 10. The performances are electrifying. The action is exhilarating and the characters deeply resonated with me. I guess you could say I had a 
God Blast? Eh? Oh, uh, uh, all right, well. Hmm. Oh, hey everyone. I know Kaijutopia is. Okay. Oh, hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I know Kaijutopia is primarily focused on giant monster videos, so this might seem like a huge departure, but believe it or not, this is content I've been wanting to make for quite some time, and I have every intention of making non-kaiju videos moving forward. Godzilla videos are still my bread and butter, of course. I love all things kaiju, and future projects will testify to that fact. Thank you so much for liking, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I hope you guys have a great day.